So <clears throat> we rearranged the lectures because some of the material that I'll t talk about, well, the ordering uh, we determined would probably be better this way. So we'll be talking about the Lang Trotter. The Lang Trotter conjecture for fixed trace. So, um, so my fir the first couple things I'll say are the same as the first things that many people have said. So, E is an elliptic curve over Q. So, we can fix a model like this, if you like, to be concrete. And we let's just uh, pick an integral model like that, and of course, the discriminants of this smoothness, smoothness condition. And if P does not divide uh, this discriminant, then EP is the reduction of E mod P. And, um, and this is an elliptic curve over the finite field FP. And <coughs> we're interested, for various reasons, in the number of FP points. And as people before me have said, the, uh, the number of points, uh, this is the ex expected number of points, including the point of infinity. And so we have this uh, deviation from it which is the trace of Frobenius. And um, we're interested in so for fixed E and fixed R and Z. Um, Lang and Trotter considered the counting function that counts the number of primes up to x. So I could say p is good, but I just don't want to say that a bunch. So assume in every time I'm counting primes, you know, there's finitely many primes that I'm excluding. So um, okay. Okay, so uh, where the Frobenius trace is equal to r. So, uh, in previous talks, this, 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 was, uh, this has been mentioned, and what I want to do is state the conjecture, but uh, explain the heuristic that uh, goes into the, the precise conjecture, There's a, and then discuss the constant a bit. So, um, so um, um, I'll do today. Um, so, uh, in the spirit of uh, uh, Professor Stevenhagen's uh, talk um, or lecture, I w just wanted to mention that um, note um, if the Frobenius trace equals R, this implies that I think Chantal also, also mentioned this. Uh, it's congruent to R mod n, maybe say mod l to the n for any, any, any prime power l to the n. And so um, this, if we replace here this, uh, this condition with this congruence, this is a Chebotarov condition in the l to the nth division field. Okay, so may view um, 
the set of primes up to x. Uh, and maybe, let's see, maybe I'll write like this. Okay. So remember that r is fixed, um, and so an integer can only be divisible by infinitely many prime powers if it's zero. So this difference, uh, if this is true for all the prime powers, then, then this is true. Okay. Um, R as a as a Chebotarov question in say so by this I mean the the compositum of all the L to the nth division fields of E. So this is an infinite extension. So let me maybe call this uh, S. You know, if, if we look at the set of primes like that, these are a set of primes that satisfy some, you know, Chebotarov condition in, in this infinite field. Um, but uh, in that case, you know, the measure of the set S is zero. So you can calculate these Chebotarov densities, and as n gets larger and larger, the Chebotarov density goes to zero. Um, so this is a very thin set of primes somehow, and so it doesn't have a density. So, because of this, um, you might think, regard this as being, uh, this is maybe some amount of evidence that this is going to be a hard, a hard conjecture. <clears throat> okay, so let's start just by, uh, with a totally naive model. So, oh, before I say anything about this, though, I want to just say something uh, about just probabilistic considerations. And so we're going to view this pro things probabilistically. So, so as a real warm-up, we'll say, um, so the prime number theorem says that pi of x, the function that counts primes up to x, oh, I, I'll say it, I won't write it, p is always a prime. And for me, l is also a prime, as with, for many of you. Uh, so this is asymptotic to uh, so, this function Li of x, um, so, uh, and this is also asymptotic to, uh, if you prefer, you know, instead of drawing an integral, you can write a sum. Okay. Um, and uh, so this, this can be viewed. The probability I'll put that in quotes uh, that n is prime is about write the mathematically meaningless uh, approximately okay is about this so the idea is well, so the idea is that um, if you take this probability and then sum on all integers up to x of this probability, you should obtain uh, a for formula for the expected, uh, the, the correct asymptotic for the number of uh, numbers up to x which are prime. Okay. So um, what we'll do, uh, so a goal is to, um, to estimate, uh, so sum f e r of p, so given p prime, so given that p is prime, we want to estimate the probability that, uh, uh, that, a, that a p of e is equal to r. Okay. Okay. So then, then we conjecture that should be asymptotic to the sum p up to x of, uh, when I say f e r p, sorry, f e r of p, okay? So that, that's what we're going to do. Okay, okay so um, to begin with, I'll just say a completely naive model that um, it's the first thing that probably anybody 
uh, considering this problem I consider, unless you have uh, a lot of experience with elliptic curves. So the, the first thing, um, I guess I didn't, didn't write it, so, so first, So we know that we know the Hasse bound, okay? So I'll just draw a picture. Now I've got to trap myself. I've got to figure out how. Okay, so imagine that we have all these integers. And then above each integer, um, I'm going to plot what the function of y equals f e r of p. And so we might just, you know, assume that um, okay that maybe it's uniformly distributed. i.e. f e r of p is equal to just 1 over the, the length of the number of points in the interval. So um, this expression is, is asymptotic to just the, you know, 1 over the main term as p goes to infinity. Um, so this uh, uniform, uniformly distributed assumption already leads to the correct order of magnitude. So asymptotic to the sum, p up to x, and I just replace this with what I know it's asymptotic to. And then you can, you know, uh, use partial summation uh, to see that this is the same as well. The, a, a half pulls out, and if you leave the two down here, it's sort of natural, you know, when you anti-differentiate. Okay, so this, this uh, naive model says that we um, expect the number of primes with Frobenius trace equal to r to be one half times root x divided by log x. So um, in the conjecture I'll, I'll eventually get, uh, this is the correct order of magnitude. But um, this constant one half seems, might seem a little bit suspicious just because it doesn't depend on e, it doesn't depend on r, it just says everything sort of you know, uni uniform. So um, let's see. Well, now I, this is tricky because I can't see. I, I, I had a little, this is cheesy, but I had a little... Uh, Example here, okay. How far do I have to go down? I want two lines to be visible. Okay, okay. So, so here's this is a, this is an, uh, some data for an elliptic curve. Okay, um, so you might stare at that and kind of say, okay, uh, does that data uh, do, is that data consistent with this? Um, so it's it's not obvious to see um, unless you have kind of a third eye, I think. So I'll. Well, maybe probably many of you know what's going on, but if you, maybe maybe some of you don't. So, is the third line visible? Okay, so the third line is just the reductions of all these Frobenius traces. I guess I can pull it farther down so that I can see too. The, the Frobenius traces reduced mod five. Okay, after all, the Frobenius traces are integers, so we can reduce the mod a given integer. And when I reduce the mod five, if you stare at these uh, these, and I, I've plotted them in the interval from zero up to five, or zero up to four. I mean. Um, so these seem, you know, so if you look at that, uh, they don't seem completely uh, uh, equidistributed among the residue classes mod 5. Maybe they shouldn't be, but they're, they're singularly, uh, they, they seem to very much want to avoid the trace 1 mod 5, okay? And, uh, so I want to explain why that's the case. Um, so why is that? Um, well, maybe I'll bring this down, actually. Might as well write it here. So... Oh, so I could have just uh, done this immediately. So this is uh, the elliptic curve here. Uh, so I, I had a model written down. Uh, I haven't memorized the, the model for um, the equation. So, uh, so here we go. This is a you know, situation where you know, 2 is actually good reduction. So it, 
you know, the minimal model isn't enough form. Um, so this is this is x naught of eleven. So it's a modular curve which parametrizes elliptic curves, uh, which admit a, 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 nice, a, a rational eleven isogeny. The well, J invariance of elliptic curves, whatever. Um, now, uh, this is one of these modular curves that happens itself to be an elliptic curve. Okay. The relevant thing really uh, is, is not, not about 11, really, um, but that's, that explains why this is not here. But um, the, the, point is that the, the point is this, that this actually has uh, a, rational, a rational 5 torsion point. So this is isomorphic to z modulo 5z. Okay. And so we know that um, for, for, so this applies, for P, you know, that are of good reduction uh, and, and not dividing the prime of five, uh, this embeds into the, gr uh, into the group of FP points. And because of that, um, because of that, uh, we know that five, so this implies, five has to divide p plus one minus a p of e for p not dividing five, for p good and not equal to five. Um, and so here you can see, well, if, if p is not five, then this is not zero. And so uh, this, but this is congruent to zero mod five. So this implies that, so. Five. For uh, okay. so that's that's one viewpoint. Um, but I want to say another viewpoint because um, uh, another viewpoint. So if uh, uh, so if P, fi fix a rational five torsion point P, um, and then extend that to a basis, uh, and uh, you know, A5 uh, is so pick pick, pick another not possibly non-rational right, non-rational two torsion point <laughs> can't be rational actually, uh, and then. Um, then just the Gawa representation um, at level five. Uh, So, um, so if you represent it, uh, so if I, if I fix a basis in, in this isomorphism, I'm fixing this basis. So this is relative to the basis, ordered basis P, Q, okay? So when I do that, um, since P has, has coordinates over Q, that implies that the image is contained in a proper subgroup Namely, uh, because you see, if it sends uh, any, any any sigma in the Galois group fixes p, so maybe that's one times p plus zero times q. So that's why this, and so so you you see this, and so therefore, um, so we see. Oh, and then the, the, the important other, other, other fact about this that will come up later, that's why I wanted to give this example, is that I just want to remind you um, from uh, a previous lecture that um, uh, if sigma p uh, equals the Frobenius in, or the image of a Frobenius, I might say, uh, then the trace viewed as a matrix, the trace is congruent to the trace of Frobenius mod five and the determinant 
is congruent to P mod 5. So. Oh, yeah. So, um, it's because it's so, so, uh, trace of one, zero. Maybe. So, the, the, this has to be an invertible matrix. Okay. So, that's another way to see it. All right. So, um, I said all that. Okay, so we see that um, we see that our naive model has a problem because so thus so we see um, gives so um, now the goal so um, so now uh, the Lang Trotter conjecture. Is that oh I, I should have said uh, I should have said in the beginning that e e is non CM but I'll say it now so if e has no I'm, I'm going to fix fix it on the non CM case so in the CM case uh, you know things are really dictated by the CM field so you're really looking at traces of L, uh, of uh, of elements above p in the in the CM field so that's kind of a, just a very different I mean. You end up uh, in the case where R is not zero. You end up getting the same asymptotic, same type of asymptotic in terms of order of magnitude, but with a, a kind of different sort of shape. Uh, the, the constant um, will kind of be a different, different flavor. So I'll, I'll focus on the non-CM case. So uh, if he has no CM, then uh, uh, then for each Z C E R. So that pi so as I said the pro the naive model gives the right uh, the right order of magnitude but the wrong constant because um, it can be uh, as in this example it, it can be that the constant is actually zero and when the constant is zero so um, um, then you can prove uh, okay. uh, that provably there are only finitely many primes uh, just because there's a, there's a local obstruction. So there's a Chebotarov type obstruction, you know, like the one I just gave. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, you, you mean here? Yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, so this is actually, yeah, why is? Because the determinant is one times p, so yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, all that matters is this, is this, this y, whatever, I mean, yeah, right. p is not equal to 5, so. Uh, so, interpret. To mean, uh, to mean this. In case uh, C E R equals zero, so the rest of the talk is trying to sort of uh, explain to you where this constant comes from. Okay, so um, so the, we want to make a better model, and uh, so for, first of all, the, the as this example shows uh, the problem with easy model. Is that it's inconsistent with? Well, first of all, uh, so the kind of mod n considerations. Uh, so you can look at the number of primes p up to x such that a p of e is congruent to r mod n for a fixed level. Okay, in that case, we took five, and we found that this was uh, this didn't didn't really have anything. So this is a Chebotarov 
uh, density theorem. In the nth division field. Okay. Oh, and the other one is. Uh, oh. Oh. The set of Tate distribution. So we know, um, okay, so. I E uh, R mod N, we can say what this is asymptotic to by the Chebotarov theorem. Okay, um, I'll say R, sorry, let me just call it E R N times pi of X, where um, this delta is the, is the appropriate Chebotarov density. So um, we can say G. Uh, M of E, uh, maybe sorry, N is just you know, rho E N of G Q. Okay, and then uh, G N E sub R is the set of all matrices in in this Galois group. of trace R, and then, well, so I've got myself into trouble here. So then uh, delta E R and is just the appropriate Chebotarov density. So this is a, to say that uh, AP is congruent to R mod N because of uh, the congruences I wrote there. They're true for a general N. So then uh, that's to say exactly that, uh, that the trace of Frobeni the, the Frobenius automorphism lives in, uh, in this subset, which is a union of conjugacy classes. So, um, and then we know this is a Sato Tate distribution. And we know this one too, but I'll write it. So uh, pi e alpha beta of x is asymptotic to uh, the integral from alpha to beta. There's this density function. And these are as x goes to infinity. Yeah. Let's see. OK. Oh, OK. So now um, we. Um, so the, the, what we should do, so our, our model should look like uh, should look. So bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and draw a picture. Uh, so so I'll give an example. The picture will be an example where the level n is three. So e.g. n equals three. And um, so, um, and say uh, delta e r, uh, sorry, delta e zero three equals maybe maybe two thirds. Delta e one three equals zero, and delta e two three equals one third. So, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, this, uh, yeah, phi. So phi of t is the Sato Tate. So, oh, yeah. So I'm normalizing. I've actually been convinced by previous talks actually that I should do from negative 2 to 2 and normalize that way. But, but I, I'm following like Trotter who did it from negative 1 to 1. So this, in this case, it's this. So this is the non CM um, semi circular distribution. So the pictures, I saw many pictures about that before.
Oh, okay. So, so this, this is for when he was talking about that. This was when you, I guess, fix a finite field and then kind of look at uh, Sato Tate somehow in in extensions of the field. Okay, over, over FP bar kind of thing. So uh, I think. Uh, and so this is not. I mean, this really is. This really has to do with the horizontal Sato Tate, the original Sato Tate. So. Actually, well, yeah, you would if you if you. Um, if you look through the heuristic and keep track of things just right, so I'll, I'll, I can say something about that in a bit. Yeah, but uh, this is this will be this model will be consistent with Chebotarov density and so to take. Okay. Uh, I, should, I should also say just uh, I'm lying a bit here. Uh, this actually can't happen, but just for the point from the point of view, of just uh, giving a picture, I want to do it. So. Uh, Okay, so zero. So then um, it'll be kind of high in the middle, maybe, uh, like that. So this is zero mod three. One mod three, I said, was zero. And two mod three should be about half of that, so about here. Okay, and then one mod three should again be bigger, um, but a little bit smaller. Uh, well, you'll see why in a second, or I'll say why, maybe. And then, uh, let's see. It's going to be a little bit smaller here. So b bear with me. <laughs> Okay. Okay, then I guess I'll go like this. So the idea is somehow the model should uh for you know for uh y equals F E R a P and here um I said we're going to give um, a density function f e r of p. Okay, what we're really going to do first is approximate it by fixing a level n. Okay, so I'm going to fix a level n. Here n is three, and it should have this kind of shape. So somehow, as you look locally, you know, in a window of length n, then the relative densities should reflect the Chebotarov density. But as you look globally, somehow, as you go over the interval, it should reflect a semicircular distribution to uh, to model Sato Tate. Okay, so I e Fix n. This is a level. And then and, and write and put um, f e r n of p to be equal to uh, well. So first of all, I'll take the 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 Chebotarov density. Multiplied by the Sato Tate density times some function, okay, so, so some number here. And the CNP, all it is is just some number that's cooked up so that this is a probability density. So this is a where CNP is, oh, maybe I should do this too, um, just to make things a little bit easier. Uh, oops. X is T. So, um, so, uh, so, just uh, ha extend this function to be zero outside of the Hasse interval. Okay. Or, uh, sorry, outside of negative one, one. Outside of negative one, one. Uh, where CNP is, uh, is chosen. So that the sum uh, if I sum over all integers, really I'm only summing over all integers where r over square root p, you know, so um, uh, of f e r n of p equals one. Okay. So it's just a normalized, so it's a probability measure. So this will this is what somehow model the probability that uh, the trace is congruent to that, considering only mod n, mod n Chebotarev. Okay. So the first uh, I want to claim, uh, and the, the claim is that um, CNP is asymptotic to n over two root p, as uh, p goes to infinity. Why, why is this? Um, 
So this is kind of reasonable uh, because um, that's what the, pro the naive model gave, and, and um, it's the length of the, uh, it's kind of what it is on average uh, somehow. Uh, but you can s just see this. Um, so I'll turn it. So the proof is, uh, well, we know that the sum for R in Z of, uh, you know, of delta E R N times phi of R over 2 root P times C N P equals 1. So if I replace this and replace this like this. Let's just see what this is equal to. Well, um, so I, I, can, I can group these according to R's residue class mod n, because if R1 and R2 are congruent mod n, then they're, you know, this, this value is the same. So I could just sum over R0 mod n times, and then we sum over the r's in z that are congruent to r0 mod n of everything that's left. Um, and the, the point is, um, so, so here's r0 over 2 root p, r0 plus n over 2 root p, and so forth. So, um, actually teaching calculus too um, this semester. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, okay. What what is this? Well, it's a Riemann sum, right? Okay. So um, this is a Riemann sum. Because the, the width is n over two root p. So this is the width, and this is the height, right? So, so this um, this approaches as p goes to infinity. Then this approaches uh, the in the integral, which is one uh, uh, times the sum r zero mod n of delta e r zero n, right? And this, of course, is the sum of Chebotarov densities as R goes a bunch of disjoint subsets of the Galois group. So this is, of course, one. So this is um, mod n of delta f g n e sub so R equals g n e. Okay. So, uh, so we have that. Okay. Um, so now, um, so because of this, um, in our model, we eventually want to, uh, we have a model that depends on a level n. And we'd like to take a, uh, we'd like to sort of remove the dependence on the level n. Okay. So, so, um, so we have, have uh, f, sorry, e, r, n of p is asymptotic to Delta E R N times the Sato Tate factor times uh, N over two root P. But um, this factor, I'd really like this this last factor to only depend on P because I eventually want to take a limit in N. Okay, so I'm I'm going to move the N over here and kind of group it with this Chebotara factor. This, this regrouping is actually kind of natural because um, if you do that, then these numbers, so these Chebotarov densities are what I was talking about at the beginning. As n gets larger and larger and larger, these, these limit to zero, okay? This is what is responsible for these, this set of primes being very, this part of what's responsible for these set of primes being very thin. Okay? So if I put the n there, I've renormalized them so that their average value is one as I average over r, okay? So, so now. Delta E R N times N 
equals one. And so the idea is, um, you know, is, is you, uh, th th these typically are, are not quite so small anymore. I've, I've normalized them so that they're bigger, okay? So now we can hope that the limit exists sort of as I let n go to infinity by becoming more and more divisible. So, um, so since, so observe, if n1 divides n2, then these division fields are nested like that. So that means, i.e., delta E R n1, or n2, contains all the info of delta E R n1 and more. When I say more, I mean kind of, um, at least from the point of view of the elliptic curve, uh, eventually it doesn't contain much more, but it, it, it contains more. So thus, this motivates us to consider f e r of p to be the limit as n goes to infinity by uh, of uh, uh, of this. Okay. And so this uh, this is what we'll do now. What what? What do I mean by this symbol? This is, this is DIV, standing for divisibility. So n is going to infinity by divisibility. Okay, what, what does that mean? Um, oh, so probably the, there's a, the fanciful terminology for this might involve the word cofinal. Um, but it basically just means that, that uh, take a sequence of numbers n that goes to infinity with a property that given any other integer m eventually the tail of the sequence are numbers that are all divisible by m. Okay. So. <clears throat> so, if you think a little, you can come up with an example of such a sequence of numbers. Um, here, I've erased the conjecture. Okay. It's dangerous to not think about what you're erasing as you're erasing it. So, um, so where uh, limit as n goes to infinity by some visibility of some function, you know, whatever, psi of n means, e.g., limit as k goes to infinity of psi of n sub k, where n sub k means the product, say, of all l's. Okay, so here's an example of a sequence of numbers uh, with that property I mentioned. It's going to infinity, and given any other integer, it's eventually divisible by the, you know, the tail of this is uh, always eventually divisible by any integer. Yeah. Um, so, why does it, so, this is really the, this doesn't depend on n. This does. So this is the only part that we need to sort of compute. We need to know that that limit exists. Um, so to prove existence of maybe I'll call this delta e r is is that limit. It's kind of the finite part. And to actually compute it, we we'll use Sarah's open image theorem. Okay, so Sarah's open image theorem says if E over Q or over F any number field um, uh, has no CM then um, if we look at uh, 
the, the image of the uh, full uh, adelic representation. So uh, this goes into, say, so I'll write a bunch of symbols. Probably many of you might know these. Uh, so z hat is just, uh, so this is the inverse limit by divisibility of GL2 z mod nz, and by the Chinese remainder theorem, it's isomorphic to the product over all L prime of GL2 zl. So this, this group has kind of a, a vertical aspect for any prime L you consider the L attic points, and also has a horizontal aspect as you append more primes. Okay. Um, uh, satisfies has open image, so this means this is a uh, okay. Um, when I first saw this, um, I was started puzzling to myself: what are the what do the finite index subgroups of the group look like? Uh, but what do they look like? I.e. The finite subgroups of this group are just uh, you obtained by taking, fixing a level, a finite level M, and then taking a finite subgroup, you know, taking some subgroup of GL2Z mod MZ, and then taking the full preimage. Okay. Uh, there exists an M so that's, okay, rho E of GQ contains I plus Equivalently, equivalently um, 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 say, rho e of GQ equals the full image, the full inverse image of rho e um, at level m e, which is a subgroup of GL two. Z mod M E Z. Okay. Okay. So this is another so so pi here pi from G L two Z hat onto you know you know what pi is. Uh, it's pretty it's a projection. Okay. Um so once you know this, then we just need a couple of facts. Uh about okay, well. So uh, in, in the process, we can actually just compute this limit explicitly, modulo computing this uh, level M E in this group. Yeah, sure. Oh yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll calculate it right now. Well, it's a, so it's a function basically of just M E. So if you if you can compute the image at level M E, then you can compute this. Okay. But that's all it depends on. However, in specific cases, calculating uh, you know the image is uh, is a bit delicate. Even if you know it at every prime and you know it at every Tate module, there's uh, th there are issues of um, intersections of, of of the sort of elatic uh, fields, and so they can intersect, and in general they they actually do. And so that, that becomes an issue. Right. Um, so, uh, so what do I want to say? Say something about independence of these things. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so, so observations. So one is that if L divides M E, um, then if I calculate, um, then if I calculate this, this, so I'm taking this, this symbol here, and I'm calculating a level uh, where N equals L times M E, okay. Well, what is this? It's L M E times, uh, bless you, uh, E sub R over G L M E E, right? 
Now, we know, uh, because of the definition of ME, that uh, the Galois group at level L times ME is the full preimage. Okay? So that means that if you look at the subset of those of trace R, uh, the full preimage has size multiplied by L to the fourth. But now we've cut it down by demanding that the traces be R. That's a linear condition. Okay, so uh, you get L cubed coming from that. So this is, uh, this is LME times L cubed times GME of E R okay, over. And then this one is just the full preimage, so L, L to the fourth. Okay, so then these all cancel, and we see that this is actually equal to ME times delta E R M E. Okay. So what does this imply? So thus, um, uh, if you just do induction and you see that if M uh, E divides M divides M E to the infinity, I hope you know what I mean by that. It's clear, I guess. Um, then uh, if I take M E R M equals M E. So this, this constant kind of stabilizes in some sense vertically. So this is vert vertical stabilization. Okay, as you kind of go up the M E attic. Uh, tape module or the product of all those. Uh, so the other the other issue is uh, uh, too. If if m1 and m2 have GCD equal to one, and GM1m2 of E is isomorphic to you know sort of splits under the Chinese remainder theorem. Okay, so this is sort of obvious. Uh, so then uh, m1, well, then m1, m2, the constant is multiplicative then. Um, okay. okay, so if you put all that together, then you, um, then you can write the constant down. one and two imply that um, the limit as n goes to infinity by divisibility of the symbol this is just equal to you know um, m e times delta e r m e times the product overall l's not dividing m e of and here the galois group is actually equal to g l two Okay, so when I write down the symbol, I'll write it, I guess. But this is actually equal to M E times the size of this Chebotara factor at level M E times the product overall L, uh, not dividing M E, of the same factor. But here it's just GL2 by definition of M E. Well, oops. Okay. So the only kind of concerns about uh, convergence of this product, that this limit exists, is the issue of just explicitly calculating this. Okay. And this you can do. So this is equal to um, M E. Well. Bear with me, I'll write this again. Okay. So you have the product over all L's, uh, not dividing M E. So this this factor here really only uh, is just really only depends on whether R whether or not R is zero mod L. When R is zero mod L, you get one answer. When R is one mod L, you get the other answer. You can see that just by sort of uh, s using scalar matrices. Okay. So then it's uh, something like. And 
this one I might have to look up. Um, so it's one minus this one I, I don't have memorized. Uh, let's see. Okay. So. So now, uh, so, so this, this finite part, this so, so to speak finite part of the constant, um, up to here, it's just a finite product. Okay, sorry, assuming r is not zero. If r is, anyway, in either case, it, whether this is an infinite product or this is an infinite product, um, th these, these are convergent, right? These are convergent order products because the sum on the part away from one is, is, is a convergent sum. Okay, okay so, so then, then this, uh, this gives us, this predicts, <clears throat> so this this predicts conjecture with the constant in front is equal to okay. Uh, I, sh I should just say, say one other thing. So um, we have this factor somewhere here. Right? So we're going to sum these. Uh, we're going to sum this probability for p up to x for large values of p. R is fixed. R is fixed. So this is um, is a this limits this limits to 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 five zero. Okay. So. Uh, so this is equal to phi of zero times this m e factor. Times this infinite product. Okay, where this uh, is. So this is, is this over here. So <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe I'll just call it, uh, so, well, I'll call this, uh, well, okay. Pi just denotes that product over there. Um, so note, uh, C E R equals zero. This is a convergent order product. So the only way this can be zero, this is not zero, this is two over pi, okay? So the only way it can be zero is if this is empty. That's equivalent to saying that there exists an integer where uh, the Chebotar of uh, you know the set of APs that are R mod N uh, is empty. Well, it has only has only bad primes. Okay, um, so uh, I'm out of time. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll stop there since I've, I've stated the conjecture. <laughs> Thank you for your time.